So now that we have our first command handler set up, let's go ahead and implement one more. And this will be a uh, command for updating the camper's allergies. So this will be a good example of how we can see the domain model comes into play. So I'll actually create a new folder called uh, create camper and I'll move our create camper files in there to keep things a bit more organized. We'll move those in there. And then we'll have another command for update allergies. And we'll have to go through the same process. So update allergies dot command and this is a constructor. So we're going to think about what we information we're going to need to update the allergies. Well, that information we can probably get from our uh, update campers uh, allergies request. So we're going to get the allergies themselves and we're going to obviously need the ID of the camper that we're updating. So we'll get the camper ID and then the new allergies array, which is an array of strings. So we have our command set up and then we'll add the handler. So I'll just go ahead and copy the handler that we've already set up. So you can see that while th the, the separation of concerns are nice and that our, our files have very few responsibilities, this CQRS approach is definitely more verbose. It takes more code to do what we want, which isn't always a bad thing, but it, it can, certainly is a trade-off. So we'll update, update allergies command here. This will be the update allergies command handler. And this should actually just be handler. And passing the update allergies command. We'll get rid of this and we'll call this the, well, we know, we know we're going to get the camper ID and then the allergies. Okay, so we have our handler. Let's go ahead and execute the logic that we know we're going to need. So the first step, of course, is going to be to obtain the camper that we want to update. So we'll call event publisher merge object context. Then we'll call this dot and instead of the factory, now we're going to need the camper entity repository and we'll call camper entity repository so we'll call await this dot camper entity repository find one by id and this is what we'll pass in the camper id so now that we have the camper this is where the domain driven design comes into play where we want to be able to just call camper dot uh, update allergies and have any uh, domain specific uh, logic live in that domain model. So let's implement that. So if we go to the camper, we'll add a new public method called update allergies, which will take a new allergies array and it's going to be void. So let's say, for example, we have a domain requirement that uh, an allergy cannot contain chocolate for some reason maybe our camp is a chocolate camp and it's just it simply cannot uh, be allowed so this domain specific um, requirement you know it involves domain knowledge that we want to just live on the domain model we, would, we don't want it living out in some service somewhere we don't want to duplicate it in uh, maybe uh, functions that we could just declare. We want it to live uh, in the domain model so that the domain model expresses the ubiquitous language uh, of the domain. So let's go ahead and implement this logic. So I'll create a new const called allergies lower, which will be uh, a new array where we'll map through the allergies and we will call allergy dot to lower uh, lowercase so that the array is all lowercase. And then we'll say if allergies lower includes chocolate, chocolate for some reason, then we'll say we'll want to throw a bad request exception. Uh, allergy may not be chocolate. So, so if this error was not thrown, then we can simply call uh, this dot allergies equals allergies that was passed in. And lastly, we'll just make sure this is a not read only because we do want to update this. So now update allergies, 
uh, is all finished. So in our handler, we just call update allergies, pass in the new allergies. And if this uh, succeeded, then we'll call this dot repository dot find one and replace by ID. We'll pass in the camper ID and then the updated camper. We'll call camper dot commit to commit any events that were emitted in this case. We're not going to emit any events, but it's good practice to just follow this pattern in case you ever change your mind. So this is all set up. We'll go ahead and add our handler to our array. And now back in our controller, we'll execute this dot command bus, pass in the update allergies command pass in new uh, update allergies command. We're gonna pass in the camper ID, which we get as a uh, query parameter or a URL parameter. And then we'll pass in uh, the update allergies request.allergies. So now back in Postman, I'll call campers uh, update allergies. And if we take a, another look at the route, this is a patch route and it's actually uh, just taking the ID right now, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We'll just add uh, an allergies at the end here. So now in Postman, we'll call campers, and we'll pass the ID. So we'll go into our database and take the ID. We'll pass the ID. And then lastly, allergies, and then we'll pass patch here. So we'll go ahead and let's first just try passing in a chocolate allergy and see if our validation is successful. So we can see here, we get the bad request exception. Allergy may not be chocolate. Okay, uh, maybe we're allergic to cookies for some reason. So if we fire that off, we have a 200 status code. And now if we look at the camper in our database, we can see the allergies is cookies. So this is a, a pretty trivial example, but it, it shows you about how you can really uh, extend it, your domain model to really have a lot of functionality in there and have it all encapsulated in this one model. Okay, so we've implemented a command, a couple of commands. Now let's go ahead and look at implementing queries. So I'll create a new folder called queries and we will implement uh, a new camper query. Okay, so this is going to be a class called campers query. And this isn't gonna take any uh, parameters because we're just gonna return every camper in our database. So we'll set up a handler as, as we always do, campers handler.ts. So this is going to be a query handler now that takes in the query, campers query. So we'll have a campers handler, implements I query handler, pass in the query. Okay, so now we need to implement the handle method. It will take in uh, the command. We won't need it in this case, so we can just leave it off promise return type void. Now we, we don't want void here though. That's the only difference. This is actually not be a handle, it should be execute. So we don't want the return type to be void. We want to return back uh, the campers we get. <clears throat> so in this case, we don't want to return back our write model. We want to create a new model specifically just for reads. So I'll do that. I'll create a new file called camper.dto and we'll call it camper.dto. And so this is the model for our queries in our system. So it could look very close to the right model. Um, and it will in this scenario, but it, these could be very different. They could be in different databases. Uh, the right model but could potentially just have relational information like IDs. And then the read model would have the documents themselves populated to make the reads quicker. So in this case, uh, we'll just specify the properties that we know we're going to have some object ID. We're going to have the name, read only, age, 
and then the allergies themselves. And then we'll add another property called uh, is allergic to peanuts. Because let's say, for example, that's really important information for our clients to have, but it's really not that important for our right model to know about. Uh, so this is an advantage where we can kind of keep the two separate. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually create a new repository called Camper DTO repository. <clears throat> this is going to be injectable and it's going to be export class Camper DTO repository. So this is a separate from our entity repository because it's not returning entities, but it's going to return uh, the read model. We're still going to inject the same model that we use in our other repository because it's going to be based off the same schema. But you could create a whole separate schema for the read model. It doesn't have to be the same one for the write model that we specified here. I'm just going to do this for simplicity purposes. So now our Camper DTO repository can implement its own custom functions to be able to return whatever read models the UI needs. So we'll implement a method called find all, be asynchronous. It's going to return a promise of Camper DTO. Okay, and now we're going to return this dot Camper model dot find. Okay, and then we're going to loop through them to see if any of them are allergic to peanuts, and if so, populate that property on the Camper. Uh, you could probably do this in the Mongo query itself, but for simpl simplicity purposes, I'll just do this um, after we've retrieved them from the database. So we'll turn campers dot map. Okay, and we'll do something similar where we um, create allergies lower, and we will we'll camper dot allergies dot map take the allergy and lowercase it. So now we have all the allergies in lower cases and we'll have the is allergic to peanuts properties will be allergies.lower.includes peanuts. So now we can return all the properties from the camper and then add the is allergic to peanuts property. Make sure we update our return type to an array of camp DTOs. And after you do that and save, we should have our, our read model ready to go. So in our campers handler, we can get a handle to the, the DTO repository. And all I have to do is return this dot camp repository find all and update the return type as well. It should be camper DTO. Let's go ahead and create an index.ts file uh, called camper queries, query handlers. Go back to our model and add the camper query handlers. And now in our controller, we are going to inject another bus. This will be the private read-only uh, query bus. I mean, import from SJS CQRS. So now in get campers, we can return this dot query bus dot execute, pass in the query. So campers query, and then the return type. It's going to be a camper DTO array. And then lastly, we'll pass in a new camper query, which doesn't take any arguments. Update with the return type to an array of camper DTOs. And one other thing we have to do is add the camper DTO repository to our providers array as well. And one final thing we actually want to do as well in our DTO repository is uh, pass an option to this find query where we have the uh, We can pass in options and specify lean true because this is going to tell Mongo uh, to to give us back just the document and nothing else extra. So now, if we come back into Postman and execute our GET request for all the campers and execute it, we can see we're getting back uh, the information 
uh, about the, the camper. And this new property that is separate from our right model is allergic to peanuts. Now, if we actually went ahead and changed the allergies here to in the database, if we actually change the allergies to peanuts and update it, let's see if our response updates. So you can see it's allergic to peanuts. So this is a pretty trivial example as well. Um, but you can see how the read model could really be very different from the write model. In fact, it could be completely different. And it could start be stored in a whole different database. And this flexibility is one of the advantages of CQRS. You could have uh, specialized performance tuning just for the queries and maybe even have the right models on a, on a different machine. So that was a brief uh, little tutorial on domain-driven design, CQRS in Nest. Uh, I'll leave the other routes up for you to try to implement. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will include all this uh, code in GitHub, as well as the final project in case you want to use this database folder in your own projects in the future. I may actually be even open sourcing this later on uh, to make it easier for others to work with. So thank you uh, and hope you have a great day.